Good morning, YouTube. All right, let's keep this going. We are gonna make a cheesy cauliflower gratin, right? Ah, so good. This is baked with a Gruyere cheese sauce and topped with toasty golden breadcrumbs, and the result is amazing, all right? So let's cook, y'all. We got a family to feed. I've noticed, of course, the <laughs> past year, cauliflower has been everywhere as an amazing little substitution for um, rice or other starches. And I thought that means we could have a perfect opportunity to take this gorgeous vegetable that is high in fiber and loaded with vitamins. And we'll just slather it in cheese because we can. <laughs> I think all rules have been suspended during the outbreak. What do you think? Not entirely. Okay, that's not entirely true. But it does mean, actually, actually, here's what's going on. Because I'm not actually able to just run to the store when I want something, I have found myself kind of um, putting my orders in, and then I go to pick up my order, and a lot of substitutions have been made. Um, and, and that's fine. I'm not having to risk myself and go in the store to do the shopping. Uh, but it also means I've ended up with this kind of unusual balance of foods that I may or may not normally use or cook with or what have you. So I'm doing some stuff that I'm trying to actually just use the things I've got without putting in 19 additional, well, I can't put in 19 additional orders because in my neck of the woods, um, you can only get a grocery order about every four days. Okay, they're just, they're overwhelmed, they're backed up, they have, no time slot, so if you don't get it in the order four days before you need it, you're not going to get it. So I have some unusual for me, unusual for me food items to use up. All right, so two tablespoons of butter over medium heat. That part's not unusual. <laughs> and normally I roast cauliflower, but one of the kids wanted to do uh, potatoes gratin, and of course we're out of potatoes, which, <gasps> what do you mean we're out of potatoes? Well, we are. Okay, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I had some extra just in case I thought we were going to need it, but I don't think we're going to. Over here, we're just making a simple Mornay, a simple cheese sauce, and we're doing it. You know what I do wish I had? Touch more butter. Hang on a second. We're doing this with a Swiss cheese because I think that would taste good. So I'm going to add do three tablespoons of butter. Okay, so that'll make our sauce a little bit more thick. And a Mornay, that's a fancy way of saying you're making a cheese sauce. So we're starting with the butter and the flour, and we're gonna add milk, right? And classically, that gives us a bechamel, a white sauce, that's all there is to that. And you can use a base white sauce to do all kinds of stuff. So this is also the way you would start making macaroni and cheese. And so I guess in a way you could call this uh, cauliflower gratin. This is a mac and cheese replacement. Well, you got the carbs and the, or the, you got the fat <laughs> and the flavor. Actually, you don't have the carbs because you're not using pasta. All right, so this is what we look like. See, that's just our butter and our flour. And I see a ton of recipes that keep saying you have to use hot milk. Well, you don't. Here's the key. You're going to whisk that until it's nice and smooth. And it is, you know, we actually, you know what? We're going to do this first. Half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Teaspoon of black pepper. Two teaspoons of kosher salt. <laughs> don't do that. Tablespoon of mustard, dry mustard. Okay, out of the way. All right. So our milk is cold. We have two cups of milk. So we had uh, three tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour, two cups of milk, okay? And we're gonna add a tiny amount. I doubt I used a quarter cup. And we're gonna whisk until the flour incorporates that and smooths out. I'm gonna add just a touch more and then I'll let you see what I'm talking about. Now, if I dump this cold milk straight into this hot roux, because that's what it is,
Watch this for a second. If I dump all of it in there, you'll never whisk it smooth. But this, just keep whisking. Now, of course, you could warm up your milk. That's fine. Um, I don't. Makes an extra pan to, to deal with. I guess I could have stuck that thing in the microwave. But honestly, y'all, I don't use the microwave as a tool when I'm cooking. I forget it exists. I just don't, yeah, I don't ever think about it. So you see a lot of the lumps have come out of that. And as it continues to heat, comes closer to a boil. Dang. That's a reminder for my friends over at the Moth in Asheville. We're going to do a virtual storytelling thing tomorrow night. That's fun. Okay, so you see? That has smoothed on out. Not a lump to be seen, y'all. And we didn't have an extra pan to heat the milk, although I guess we could have done it in the microwave. All right, so we're going to keep doing this. We're going to add the rest of this milk in here a little at a time and continue whisking. Now, in this casserole dish right here, 7 by 11, we have one big fat head of cauliflower. And all I did there was uh, cut the cauliflower off of the stems. And I blanched the cauliflower. What does that mean? Well, it's a fancy way of saying you brought about a quart and a half of water to a boil. Heavily salted water. A couple tablespoons of salt in that. Heavily salted water to a boil. And then I dunked that cauliflower for about five minutes and pulled it out. I did not truly blanch it because I didn't drop it into ice water. Ice water would have shocked it and kept it from cooking. What we ended up with, though, were these beautiful little heads, just like this, that are already primarily tender, okay? Just jump starts the cooking process. And I have placed them all head down in my casserole dish. These little florets are like sponges. They will take up anything, any flavor you pair them with. And if you've got them face down like that, the top side of the, of the florets, the top side's gonna get the cheesy, buttery uh, breadcrumb crust, and the bottom is gonna be down there collecting all that sauce like sponges. <laughs> yes. All right. Cheddar cheese. Nope, Swiss cheese. I forgot what I was had. What I had. You can use whatever you like. Now, give your sauce a taste, because here's where you're going to adjust for salt and pepper. Oh, no, that's good. Mm. Oh, yeah. And don't forget, we had heavily salted water for our cauliflower. But you want to season all your elements, right? There'll be a hint of salt in your cheese. Not much, but a hint. I personally think... Uh, Swiss cheese often could use, well, commercial supermarket Swiss cheese. Could often use a bit of salt. All right, we're just whisking in. You shred it to make it easier for it to melt and incorporate. If you just dropped a hunk of cheese in there, it would, wouldn't melt and take years. Okay, so here's, see? So this was, started out as a 12 ounce package, but my daughter got into it, so it was more like a nine ounce package. <laughs> so I shredded that, and then I set aside, oh, I don't know, half a cup, maybe a third, whatever. So there we go, we're just whisking that together, and at this point you can turn the heat off, because that sauce has thickened nicely we're going to do this. Whoops. We're going to knock it over again. Sorry. All right. So here we go. Half a cup of breadcrumbs. We're going to add two tablespoons of butter that we melted. And we're just going to mix that together. Because there isn't a whole lot better than buttery breadcrumbs on something, is there? All right. And then our cheese sauce. 
That's hot. <laughs> Our cheese sauce right over the top of that cauliflower. And can you see? <laughs> that is some, some stringy cheese. All right, and I'm just giving it a nudge to help that cheesy goodness kind of soak down around the edges of all that cauliflower. You want it to get into all the nooks and crannies and all those little crevices. And like I said, this is kind of a riff on a mac and cheese. I am not gonna sit here and try to tell you this is healthy. I'm just not. It's cause you know, <sighs> look what we did to it. But on the other hand, if you're trying to avoid white flour, processed flour, what have you, and you need to avoid using regular pasta, then this is no worse than macaroni and cheese. How about that? Let's go with that. Let's go with it's not worse than. <laughs> this is your YouTube fairy godmother justifying all your bad choices. <laughs> all right. So that little bit of reserved cheese over the top and then sprinkling this with the breadcrumbs. We have our oven back here to 350 degrees and this is going to go into our 350 degree oven right at 30 minutes maybe a touch longer. You want to let it get to the point where it's nice and bubbly all the way through and here's what we look like. Okay so here we go 350 degree nope no, my oven's on 400 because I've got a roast chicken. All right, let's do 400 for right at 30 minutes. We'll call it even at the middle. How about that? All right, so I ended up on the phone. <laughs> I just had a great conversation with an old, old friend. And this came out of the oven probably 30 minutes ago, so I'm sorry. Look how beautiful that is. Tell me, that's not just insane. And the way it smells, woo! Yep. And... Let's see. You know I gotta come over. See, you know what I like? These bits where you've got crunchy brown topping. Holy cow. Good? Dude, that is stupid good. <laughs> that should not taste that good. It's vegetables. It should not taste that good. All right, y'all. You wanna make this? Trust me, you will be very happy.